Movies and Toys. They have a long history together. I actually wrote my senior thesis in college about the relationship between toys and movies, specifically using toys to market movies. But we all know that toys, action figures, dolls, well, they and movies are a great partner. I mean, they go together like pandas and monster trucks. My name is Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. I have been in the toy industry as a designer and marketer for the last 20 plus years, but I'm also a collector and I'm a parent. And that's given me a unique perspective and I put that perspective together here on the Spectra Creative Channel. So welcome. To appreciate subscriptions and thumbs ups because those keep these videos being shown to other people. And that's what this is all about is sharing information. So thank you ahead of time. I usually save that for the end, but throwing it in now because you know, why not? Now, I have had the absolute privilege of working on a ton of cool toys, including some great movie lines. I mean, who can forget the amazing Green Lantern live-action movie with Ryan Reynolds and the toy line that accompanied that? I was the brand manager on that. It was unbelievable. I also had the chance to work on Star Wars action figures for a movie. I worked on both Episode 7 and Rogue One toys for Jack Specific specifically their big figs toys, 20-inch, 30-inch, and even some gigantic 48-inch toys. And in today's video, I want to examine the relationship between movies and toys and a few different issues that pop up. First off, and I've already made a video fully about this one, but sometimes toys can reveal things in movies that didn't happen. And this is because toys are planned well in advance of their street date. In fact, sometimes toy planning happens before the cameras even start rolling, and toy companies are working off of scripts that don't always wind up being true to what shows up on screen. I did a whole video about that. You can see the link here. Then, of course, there's the issue of toys not being ready in time for a movie. This is obviously rare because nowadays everybody wants their, their uh, movie to be a toy, but, you know, back in the 70s, Star Wars couldn't quite do that. So they issued the notorious early bird kit, which was a promise that figures were on their way by mailing in a certificate. But the main issue I want to talk about today is plot leaks. How toys notoriously can leak specific moments from movies that the filmmakers want to keep under wraps so they can surprise audiences. And I'm going to propose a solution to this. So let's talk about the issue. So toys are notorious for leaking kind of the end of movies or the big climax. Uh, this happens many different companies, many different toys. Lego in particular tends to get sort of the uh, like rough end of the stick because Lego sets are usually in a set is, is recreating an entire scene or an entire moment from a movie, as opposed to an action figure is just a character or a doll. So, for example, this set from Captain America 2, uh, I'm sorry, 3, Civil War, showed Giant Man before that was revealed to the audience because the set was showing a whole scene. On the other hand, you do get leaks from specific figures, like this Ray figure from The Force Awakens that came packed with Luke's lightsaber. At revealing that she was going to wield a lightsaber. And images of this figure showed up before the movie hit theaters. So kind of that major moment in the movie when Rey picks up the lightsaber is ruined by a toy. Other times, mysteries of what is the villain going to look like, like the monster. In the case of Jurassic World, the Indominus Rex, same thing actually happened with Cloverfield, where the monster was revealed as a toy before the movie came out. So what do toy companies do to try to avoid these leaks? Well, they have a few strategies. One, they try to use what's called, well, code names. I was gonna say what's called code names, but code names for their toys. Sure, you're gonna have your Darth Vader and your Stormtrooper, but then the new figures often get names like Cool Beta and Foxtrot, and, you know, weird names like that. Other things they do is they will put uh, shelf dates on their master cartons, saying that you can't put this on shelf until a certain date. And while these are good in theory, much like communism is good in theory, they don't work as well as one would think. 
And that's for a number of reasons. One is because a lot of times the shelf date is really hard to see. See that circle there, that red circle on these toys? That's the shelf date. It's not that easy to read. And there could be multiple toys from one manufacturer with different street dates that are all printed exactly the same. So that causes the, you know, the stock person to have to really examine. I mean, look at how small that box is there. Uh, that explains when the on-shelf date is. That's not exactly something that's going to catch someone who's stocking shelves, going to catch their attention. Even when they print it on the top of the box in multiple languages, honestly, the person stocking toys is often in a hurry, and they're often doing this in the middle of the night. And while street dates are good ideas, getting them to actually work in the real world is difficult, especially because... For the most part, toys don't have specific street dates the way, you know, DVDs or comic books do. And even the packaging itself can often cover up the street dates. Like, you know, in this one, the tape or a shipping sticker can often cover the warning saying, don't put this on shelf. So while it's great to have street dates, it's not that easy to execute. And somewhere in the world, one is going to get leaked. To have 100% compliance especially when stock rooms aren't, you know, always perfectly well kept. There's going to be someone somewhere in some small town that puts out figures and then, you know, because of the whole internet thing. You guys have heard of the internet, right? It's this newfangled thing that Al Gore created. But yeah, you know, all it takes is one and then suddenly it leaks. Another thing is cross-sells. So, you know, back back in the day, Sonny, you know, we had cross-sells on all toys. Every toy had a cross-sell because that was an advertisement to tell you what else was in the line that you could ask your parents or grandparents or gift givers to buy for you or, you know, use your allowance. Although studies have shown kids don't buy toys with their allowance. They buy candy, but that's not important right now. Sometimes cross-sells become part of pop culture. The, the art or the images on the back of toys, dolls, action figures, cars, just becomes part of the toy experience and even becomes modern art, shall we say. I mean, I think a lot of people would say that the Masters of the Universe original 8-back showing the figures in painting form as a cross-sell is really modern art. Now, other times cross-sells are needed to explain how to use the toy. In the case of Marvel Legends, you need to buy all the figures in order to create your Build-A-Figure. So the cross-sell has to explain that, that these are the six or eight or 12 figures you need to buy that come with the right pieces, and then you can get your you know, bonus large character, in this case, Strong Guy from X-Factor. An interesting case is back in the 80s, when Kenner put out Return of the Jedi, George Lucas wanted to keep Ewoks secret. So they literally blacked out the Ewoks on the cross-sell. Their names were still listed, but the image of who they were and what they looked like, you know, little teddy bears, was literally blocked out with a black blur. You know, it looks like a bad Photoshop job, but this is actually how these ship to stores pre-movie. Interesting idea. Again, you know, interesting. Not always going to work. Action Figure Insider did a really good editorial about what they call the death of the cross-sell, especially in regard to Star Wars figures, which are notorious for having cross-sells from back in the day that, again, much like Masters of the Universe, really were pop culture art into themselves. Some you know people collect these and display just the card backs because these are gorgeous pieces of toy history, I guess one could say. Now, while they had lots of figures back in the day, now... You don't see any. You basically see a short bio of one figure, an explanation of maybe how to use the toy's feature, and that's it. There's no cross-sell, and this has gone away. Is this to keep leaks down? Maybe. Another solution that toy companies have come up with is just holding back on releasing a key figure that represents a secret moment in the film until well after the movie is released. So, for example, uh, Rey as a Sith Lord, or in her... Sith evilness disguise, which was in the trailer, <laughs> which is kind of funny. So everyone saw it in the trailer, but getting a toy of it was not available for, you know, was it been like a year, two years since the movie came out? So 
you know, that's interesting how it was leaked in the trailer, but the toy still wasn't available to be made for several years to keep this a secret. And then you have cases like, well, you know, Baby Yoda. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The Child, excuse me. It's called The Child. I shouldn't call him Baby Yoda. Now, when Baby Yoda showed up in The Mandalorian, of course, as they say, it broke the internet, quote-unquote, and everyone fell in love with this adorable little scamp, but you couldn't find toys of him anywhere, and that was very deliberate. John Favreau, who created The Mandalorian and directed it, specifically didn't want toys of it at launch because he wanted that surprise. He wanted everyone to be, you know, shocked when The Mandalorian opens that little, uh, you know, pram and, and Baby Yoda pops out. And there were all sorts of business articles talking about how, like, oh, you know, is this going to be terrible for Star Wars sales and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, fast forward to a year later and we have more Baby Yodas than any human being possibly needs in every possible scale from life size to minis miniature to electronic to plush. Yeah, you can get plenty of Baby Yodas. So what is the solution? Well, I actually have kind of an out-of-the-box idea. Uh, I've always thought it'd be a good one to try out. So toys are always in assortments, right? My suggestion is anything that is secret, anything that needs to be kept away from the public, but you still want to have it out there during the entertainment, i.e. not have a Baby Yoda situation, you put it into its own assortment and call this the secret assortment. Instead of mixing action figures that could potentially leak things, like that Ray with the lightsaber, uh, the blue lightsaber, not the red one, uh, the, the episode seven one, you, you don't put that in the main assortment. You put it in its own assortment. So that way, retailers, it's not about a street date for certain assortments, but or you know certain waves, but that toy, that toy number has an embargo. So that way, anything secret can go into one assortment and doesn't have to mix. And this allows retailers and stock people to focus on one thing not to put out, as opposed to a whole bunch of different waves and assortments that all have different street dates. Just put everything secret into one box. And that way we can just focus on that, keep that secret till the movie comes out or the TV show hits, and there you go. Everyone's happy. I hope you like this video. Again, like I said in the beginning, I'd appreciate a subscription and a thumbs up because that tells YouTube to share this with more people. And that's the goal of this channel, is to share toy knowledge and toy love. I'm Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.